In this video, I'm going to cover the hydrolysis of salts and determining whether a salt is an acid, a basic, uh, an acid, a base, or neutral. So remember, we talked about this earlier, that a salt is any ionic compound. So it's any time we have a cation and an anion, we can call that thing a salt. So it's a very, very general term. Salt basically means ionic compound. Um, when we talk about salt, we sometimes say that, you know, NaCl is salt, which is true. That's, we can maybe clarify that and specify and say that's table salt. That's salt that we eat, that we use on our food. But we can be far more general and say that all ionic compounds are salts. So when we're determining if a salt is an acid or a base, um, or neutral, or not an acid or a base, we have to determine, we have two parts in all salts. We have a cation and an anion. So cations are either going to be acids or neutral. A cation cannot be a base. So these can be acid or neutral. Cations either can be acidic or neutral. And, cat, and anions can either be basic, bases, or neutral anions with the exception of some amphoteric ions that we'll see, are generally not acidic. So um, things that have a positive charge are more likely to be acids. Things that have a negative charge are more likely to be bases. So almost all anions are basic. Anything that has a negative charge, almost everything that has a negative charge is basic. The only exceptions to that rule are the conjugate bases of strong acids. And remember, we only have six strong acids, HCl, HBr, HI, H2SO4, HNO3, and HClO4. So the conjugate bases of those strong acids are Cl minus, Br minus, I minus, HSO4 minus, NO3 minus, and ClO4 minus. These six anions are neutral. They're not acidic or basic. They're completely neutral. Every other anion that has a negative charge, every other negatively charged particle is basic. So that's pretty easy when we're looking at an anion. Is it basic or neutral? Well, unless it's one of these six right here, it's basic. And we already know these six because these are just the other half of our strong acids. And we already have memorized the six strong acids. So now let's look at cations. Almost all cations are neutral. So we can say, when I look at something that has a negative charge, it's almost certainly a base, unless it's one of these six things. When I look at something that has a positive charge, it's almost certainly neutral, with the exception of cations that have a three plus charge or larger, which we haven't seen a lot of those. Here's a few of them, but we don't see, generally we don't see cations that have such a large positive charge. And the other exception to this is ammonium, NH4+, this polyatomic cation is itself an acid. So the, the rule is when you see something that has a negative charge, it's almost certainly a base. And when you see something that has a positive charge, it's almost certainly neutral with these few uh, exceptions here. Okay, so some ions, some anions, are both acids and bases at the same time. So we call those amphoteric. Here's a couple of examples. So when we have a polyprotic acid, uh, H3PO4 loses an H, and then it becomes H2PO4 minus, and then this loses an H, and it becomes H1PO4 two minus, Right? And it could lose the H again and become PO4 three minus. So when we have polyprotic acids that have lots of H's they can lose, then remember that um, oops. just going to add this one up here, H3PO4. And we'll add this one just to complete this series down here, PO4 three minus, so we can look at all those bits that are in this dissociation. These ones right in the middle, remember from the previous video, these are both acids and bases.
So remember, we can call this one H3A. Sometimes it helps to, you know, instead of having PO4, which is kind of a lot of figures to remember, let's just call that thing A. And we can talk about this principle without having so many figures. We'll call this A3 minus. So remember, H2A minus can be an acid. It's an acid like this. It donates H plus and then it turns into HA2 minus. And H2A minus can also be a base because if I give it an H, then it turns into H3A. Right? So this compound here, H2A minus, can be an acid or a base. And we would call this one here, this is Ka2, and this is Kb1, right? So we can talk about uh, Ka and Kb, whether that is acting as an acid or a base. So when I have compounds that can do both of these, the question is, which of these is it going to do? When I put H2A minus in water, is H2A minus going to donate an H plus to water and make that solution acidic? Or is H2A minus going to take an H plus from water and make that solution basic? So when a compound can be either an acid or a base, it's hard to tell which of those it's going to do. How do we tell? Well, we have to look at this, this difference right here, Ka2 and Kb1. So let's write out this whole scheme here for all of these polyprotic, for a, a generic polyprotic reaction. So we've got the first association H2A minus, H plus, plus HA minus, HA minus, or 2 minus, oops, 2 minus, goes to A, goes to H plus, plus A3 minus. Okay, so let's look at these Ka and Kb values. We call this Ka1, Ka2, Ka3. But since we can also look at these in reverse, this can also be a base. So if it goes backwards, we could call this Kb1, Kb2, Kb3. Three. Because remember, uh, the acidity and the acidity and basicity of conjugate acids and bases are related by Kw, because Kw equals Ka times Kb. So Ka and Kb are always, as one goes up, the other goes down, because they're always equal to Kw, which is a constant. So there's this relationship here. The forward reaction is Ka, and then if I look at it in reverse, this thing is acting as a base, so it's going to go this way. So when I want to know what is, K, what is H2A going to do when it goes into water, is H2A going to be an acid like this? H2A gives an H plus, and it makes HA2 minus. Is it going to be an acid, or is H2A going to take an H plus, and is it going to be a base? Is it going to move this way in the reaction? So when I look at H2A specifically, I either have this process, where I'm looking at H2A become, being an acid, or I have this reverse process where I'm looking at H2A being a base moving this way. 
So what I have to do to determine is H2A going to be an acid or a base is I have to compare Ka2, let me do these in the right color here, so I've got this color scheme going on. I have to compare Ka2 versus Kb1. If I know the value of Kb1 and I know the value of Ka2, then those two things tell me what H2A is going to do. And the bigger number tells me if K if this is going to be an acid or a base. So when K K A two is greater, K A two is smaller, then this means that this is acidic. And if Kb1 is bigger, then that means that the solution is basic. So for these amphoteric salts to determine whether they're going to be acidic or basic, because they're actually both at the same time, we have to look at these values. We have to consider these equilibria that are happening, all of these different equilibria, and we have to consider these values and compare these numbers. What, if we're looking at H2A, then I'd compare Ka2 and Kb1. If I'm looking at HA2 minus, this one right here, and I want to know what it's going to do, I would have to look at Ka3 and Kb2. So I always have to be considering these equilibria when I'm trying to answer the question, is this an acid or is this a base when I put it in water? All right, so um, a couple of other um, uh, amphoteric salts that could potentially be acids or bases are um, so whenever I have an ammonium cation and some kind of basic anion. So remember, ammonium NH4 plus is a weak acid. So if I have that cation, NH4 plus, and I have some anion that's not one of the six that I know is, is neutral, then this is going to be a weak acid, and this half is going to be a weak base. I have acid and base in the same compound, just like up here. Acid and base, acid and base, acid and base. If I ever have an acid and a base in the same compound, then when I put it in water, I don't know if it's going to be more like an acid or if it's going to be more like a base. It's doing both, but which is it doing to a greater extent? Does it turn the water more basic, or does it turn the water more acidic? So again, to answer that question, I have to look at two different equilibria. NH4 plus is going to act as an acid, right? It's going to go to NH3 and H plus. So I look at Ka for this process. And F minus is going to act as a base. So it's going to react with water, and it's going to make HF plus OH minus. This is what bases do. So this would be Kb. So this is it, it, NH4 plus acts as an acid. This is the equilibrium. And I can look this Ka up on a table to tell me what this number is. And if F minus acts as a base, it's going to be in this reaction. And I can look this number up, this Kb, look this up on a table to tell me what that's going to be. So if Ka is bigger, then this solution will be acidic. If Kb is bigger, then this solution will be basic. And you can see why right here. If Ka is bigger, that means I'm making more H+. Plus. It's a product. But if Kb is bigger, that means I'm making more OH- minus as a product. So when I have these salts where both sides, this is an acid and this is a base, I always have to compare these numbers in order to say whether the solution is going to be acidic or basic. And the last example here is metal oxides. Remember, most metals, most cations are neutral. But aluminum, 3 plus, is an acid. And Cr, 6 plus, is an acid. These have very large charges, so these are acids. And on the other half, these are min um, O, 2 minuses, oxides. O, 2 minus. Oxide is a very strong base.
And we can see why if we consider that water is also a polyprotic acid. What happens when water loses an H plus? It becomes OH minus, right? But look, OH minus has an H, right? So we don't consider it as such when we're first learning this stuff. But if we're talking about polyprotic acids, H2SO4 can lose both H's, then H2O can lose both H's. When H2O loses the first H, it becomes OH minus. But OH minus has another H it can lose. And when it loses the second H, it becomes O2 minus. So if this is, if OH minus is strong, remember, um, we, we say the, uh, the weaker the acid, the stronger the conjugate base. And the stronger the acid, the weaker the conjugate base. So H2O is a weak acid. Weak acid, strong conjugate base. If this is a strong base, then we know it's a really weak acid. If this was a weak acid, then OH minus is a much, much weaker acid. So if this is, an, if this is a weak acid, it gives us a strong base. This is an incredibly weak acid. It gives us a very strong base, an incredibly strong base. We can say in general that as the negative charge gets bigger and bigger and bigger, something gets more and more basic. So O2 minus is more basic than O1 minus. So these oxide ions are incredibly strong bases, even stronger than hydroxide. So Al3 plus is an acid. O2 minus is a base. Is this is a solution of aluminum oxide acidic or basic? Well, we have to look at these numbers. We have to look at the Ka of aluminum, and we have to look at the Kb of uh, oxide and determine which of those is bigger to determine if this is going to act as an acid or a base when it's in a solution of water. OK, so if the salt cation is the conjugate acid of a weak base and the anion is the conjugate base of a weak acid, then the pH of the solution depends on the relative strength of the acid and base. So again, just like we just said, if, this, if the cation is an acid and the anion is a base, then we don't know if it's going to be an acid or a base in water, or rather we should say it's doing both, but to which is it doing, a, is it doing to a greater extent? We need to look at Ka. That tells us the extent to which that's being an acid. Kb tells us the extent to which that's being a base. So we can compare Ka and Kb. In this case, Ka is bigger than Kb, therefore the solution is acidic. All right, let's practice. Are the following salts acidic, basic, or neutral? So each salt always has two parts. So whenever you're trying to assess whether something's acidic, basic, or neutral, you should look at both sides separately. So we have K plus and Br minus. OK, cations. What is the rule about cations? Almost all cations are neutral except ones that have a really big charge, like 3 plus or bigger, that doesn't apply here, or ammonium, NH4 plus. So neither of those applies here, so this is neutral. K plus, neutral. Br minus. What's the rule for anions? Almost all anions are bases, except the conjugate bases of strong acids. So we have six anions that are not bases. And those six are uh, come from the strong acids. So remember, just to remind ourselves over here, here are the strong acids. HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, H, and I'm going to write this one funny, and you'll see why in a second, HClO4. So those are our strong acids, which means that the conjugate bases of those strong acids are the only neutral anions. All other anions are bases. These six anions are neutral. Br is one of them. Br is neutral. All right, I'm just going to say A, B, N. Make this easier for me to write these down here. N, N, both neutral. 
So this salt, when I put it in water, it's neutral. All right, let's do this one. Mg2 plus. All cations are neutral, with a few exceptions. Is this one of those exceptions? No. It's not 3 plus or higher, and it's not ammonium. So that's neutral. Magnesium 2 plus neutral. Here's our other side, CO3 2 minus. Almost all anions are basic. Is this one of, is this one of our exceptions? Here's our exceptions, CLBRINO3, HSO4, ClO4. No, this is not one of our exceptions. Therefore, this is basic. So a neutral cation and a basic anion means that this is basic. I should write that down up here. This is neutral. All right, lithium plus. NO3 minus. Lithium plus, all cations are neutral with a few exceptions. This is not one of those exceptions. NO3 minus, all bases or all anions are bases with the following exceptions. This is one of those exceptions. So this is not a base. So this is neutral. So this compound is neutral. All right, Al3 plus and ClO4-1 minus. Remember, I have three of them because this has a three plus charge. So Al3 plus, um, all cations are neutral with a few exceptions. Is this one of those exceptions? Yes. So when I have a cation with a large charge, it's acidic. ClO4 minus, all anions are basic with a few exceptions. This happens to be one of those exceptions. So this is neutral, it's not a base. Acidic plus neutral means that this compound would be acidic if I, if I dissolve this in water. All right, let's do this one. NH4 plus Cl minus. NH4 plus is acidic, that's one of our exceptions. Cl minus is neutral, that's also one of our exceptions. So I have an acid and a neutral, so this is acidic. Here I have Na plus and F minus. Na plus is neutral. F minus is basic. All anions are basic unless they're on this list, and F minus is not on this list, so it is basic. C I C A two plus and I minus. Ca2 plus uh, is neutral. I minus is neutral. It's on our list. So calcium iodide is neutral. All right, strontium, Sr2 plus. It's not a three plus and it's not ammonium, so it's neutral. H SO4 minus. It is one of our exceptions. It's the, it's the conjugate base of sulfuric acid, so it's neutral. So to determine whether a salt is going to be acidic or basic or neutral when you dissolve it in water, we have to look at each side independently. Is the cation neutral or acidic? Is the anion neutral or basic? Okay, let's look at another one. Are the following amphoteric salts acidic or basic? So again, we have to do the same thing, right? So let's look at, we cut this in half, and we look at the cation, Mg2+, and we look at the anion, HPO42-. So Mg2 plus, is that acidic or neutral? That is neutral because it's not three plus or bigger and it's not ammonium. HPO42 minus, is that uh, base? So all, um, remember all anions are basic. Is this also acidic though? Because remember this is one of our, uh, whenever we have a conjugate base from a polyprotic acid, then 
it has an H. So this could be an acid with an H, and it could also be a base because it has a negative charge. So this is an acid and a base. So how do we know if this is going to be acidic or basic when I put it in water? Well, I have to draw my equilibria. HPO4, if this is going to be a base, let me put my charges in here, then it's going to look like this. H2PO4 1 minus plus OH minus, and this is going to be KB. Or HPO4 could be an acid, which means it's going to donate an H, and it's going to make PO4 3 minus, and this is going to be Ka. So in order to determine if, oh, let me put the minuses in here. In order to determine if HPO4 2 minus is going to be a base or an acid, I have to look at this KB value and this Ka value and determine which is bigger. So let's look these up on a chart. All right, so here, is our, here are our Ka values for phosphoric acid. So remember that um, generally when you look in a table, you're not going to get Kb values. You usually get Ka, and remember this is Kb, but then we'll have Ka2 down here. This would be Kb2, the reverse reaction, and then Ka3 and Kb3, the reverse reaction. It's supposed to be a 2 and a 2. So um, when we look in a chart, generally these K values are just Ka. This is Ka1, Ka2, and Ka3. But what I really need here is Ka3. That's this here, right? That's me having HPO4 2 minus acting as an acid. And I also need HPO4 2 minus acting as a base, which here is called Kb2. So how do I get Kb2 if I'm only given Ka2? Well, remember that Kw equals Ka times Kb. So Kw equals Ka2 times Kb2. So Kb2 equals Kw over Ka2. So Kw is a constant. It's always 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees C. Divide this by our Ka2 right here. 6.2 times 10 to the minus 8. So our Kb2 value is 1.61 times 10 to the minus 7. Okay, so Kb2 is 1.61 times 10 to the minus 7, and Ka3 is 4.8 times 10 to the minus 13. So Kb2 is bigger than Ka3, so this is more likely to be a base than it is to be an acid. So this equals basic. All right, so now we can do the same thing for this bottom one. We're just going to need the Ka values for oxalic acid. So here's the Wikipedia for oxalic acid, C2H2O4. So now we have C2H1O4. So let's see what the Ka values are here. pKa, so it gives us the pKa values. So we'll turn these pKa values into Ka values. So. So 
So it looks like pKa1 is 1.25 and pKa2 is 4.14. I'm going to write those down. So pKa1 equals 1.25. PKA2 equals 4.14. And this is for, remember, these are the reactions. C2, we'll put the H's first. O2. It's going to become HC2. Oh, this is O4. My bad. O4 plus H plus. And then we have HC2O4 minus losing another H plus and becoming C2O4 2 minus. So this is Ka1, Kb1, Ka2, Kb2. So we need to know, if I want to know, well I guess we haven't done this part yet, but we have Na plus neutral, and we know that this side is an acid and a base because it has an H, HC2O4 minus. It's an anion, so I know it's a base, and it has an H, so I know it's an acid, so it's both. So if it's going to be an acid, then I need Ka2. And if it's going to be a base, then I need Kb1. So how do I turn pKa into a Ka? negative log of Ka. And the Ka equals 10 to the negative pKa. So Ka1 equals 10 to the negative 5.62 times 10 to the negative 2. And remember, Kb1 equals Kw over Ka1. Kw, 10 to the minus 14. Ka1, we just calculated, 5.62 times 10 to the minus 2. equals 1.78 times 10 to the minus 13. Kb1, pretty small, 1.78 times 10 to the minus 13. So that's HC2O4 minus acting as a base, pretty small number. HC2O4 minus acting as an acid, well that's pKa2, Ka2, so we didn't look at that one yet. Ka2 equals 10 to the negative pKa2 equals negative 4.14 equals 7.24 times 10 to the negative fifth. So Ka2, this acting as an acid, is a bigger number than that compound acting as a base. So this is going to be acidic. 